Hello again. In this series we're going to cover data logging and display. This is the first video of a two-part series. In order to collect, store, and display data, you will first need to collect data samples. This first video will focus primarily on data sampling and some other data backup functions. I've created a project to uh, get started with here. And um, so under the uh, data history tab, uh, you'll find the data history ribbon. And uh, over here is an icon for data sampling. And uh, in this particular instance, I've created a uh, data sampling object. And um, you can either take a uh, trigger-based sample uh, which would either use a PLC or internal bit that you can define to trigger the data sample and um, or you can do a time-based data sample which I have in this particular instance and uh, you can define the frequency at which the sample is taken I've uh, chosen a one second interval uh, in this case, our read address is going to be a uh, local register, uh, RW0. Now that we've defined our uh, beginning read address, we can define our samples. Now in this case, I am going to uh, collect samples from sequential registers. So I can do all of these in one sample. I won't have to create multiples. Um, uh, if they're if they're all in a uh, in a se sequential registers, so um, we've got a data format button here, and this is where we actually create our data samples. Um, in this case, uh, I've named it 16-bit timer one. We are taking a value from a timer that I created in a project, and the accumulated value is stored in uh, register RW0. So our first 16-bit uh, data sample is going to come from RW0. I've got another 16-bit timer and that's going to RW1. And now I've got two 32-bit timers and they the, these values are going to um, RW2 and RW4. So you can see that we're uh, reading a, a, our data sample length of six total of six words. Now uh, here I've got a hold address defined. This can either be uh, uh, your PLC or one of your driver devices or the local HMI which I chose to use. Address of LB100. Now this will pause the entire data sample. Uh, so uh, you, if you want to individually pause each channel, you will need to create individual data samples for each one. So anyways, so here, uh, if this bit is on, we're in a pause mode, or I could choose if it's off or paused. There's a control address you can use here. We can define a, an address. Here we'll do LW0. And I think it's free, yes. Uh, we'll use LW0 for a control address. Now what we can do is the current samples in between backups, we can either, either clear all of those samples or we can go ahead and, and send a command here to sync and it will save it to wherever your storage device is. You could use a USB drive or an SD card. Um, or you can sync and clear the data up to date and it will start fresh like it did an auto backup. Um, here I have uh, enabled the history files and 
Oh, by the way, if you don't enable history files, if you're just doing current ones, this control address will only uh, do a clear, of course, because we haven't defined any where to back the data up at. Here you can do a, uh, you can either back up to your local memory or a USB uh, drive or SD card. Now uh, you've got a couple choices on your file handling. Um, if you just want to create one file on your storage device and overwrite it periodically whenever you do a backup and, and, and just overwrite the old file, then you can check this radio button here, all records in one file, or you can choose to use customized file handling. And in that case, we will uh, embed uh, some time and or date information in the log file name. So it will create a unique file uh, and the name will, con uh, will contain the date or time. Now, the date or time that you define in the file name will actually be the date or time that the sample is backed up or that the samples are backed up uh, on your storage device. So if uh, we are to the resolution of a day right here, then we will do a backup once a day, It'll be at midnight when one day changes to another day. Uh, if we add a resolution to the minute, we would create a new file every minute. So uh, that's basically how that works. In this case, I'm doing a, a daily backup. Now, you can go ahead and sync the, uh, the files on a, on a frequency defined in minutes if you wish, uh, in case you're concerned with a power failure or something like that, if it's critical data that you cannot afford to lose, uh, you can do that and it will, it will create the file on the first sync and it will update the file and until the, uh, until the date changes and then it'll create a new file. So pretty simple how all that works. Now, uh, we also have some other backup objects available. Now, uh, again, under our uh, data history tab, you'll find a couple of uh, backup objects. You've got your trigger and your global. Um, there's not a huge difference between the two, um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the trigger based. Uh, <clears throat> at the trigger base backup. Now, of course, we want to uh, back up our historical data sampling. And uh, in this case, you, you can back up to your USB card, your SD card, or if I had uh, email set up in this uh, project, we could actually email um, our backup files. We can do a, a CSV file can uh, add the byte order mask to the header in uh, in the uh, in the Excel file. Uh, you can include your time and date stamps uh, with it, and you can do down to the uh, millisecond if you like. I would uncheck that uh, in this case. Um, so you can do, uh, you can either do uh, start at the current to the previous uh, whatever files. So if, uh, if you had had um, uh, several files stored that you wanted to back up at once, you can. Or you can start so far back up to current. And, uh, and back all those files up. Um, 
so we can do a uh, touch trigger or we can do an external bit trigger. We can find a bit either from our PLC or our local uh, HMI bits. Now you can define what the uh, condition is, the backup to take place. Uh, so in this case we did an off to on. We can also check to turn the bit back off after the backup takes place. I would not uh, suggest this if you were doing more than one uh, backup with the same bit, uh, with the same trigger bit. Uh, I would suggest using a timer or something and leaving that bit on for a certain uh, period of time and then turning it back off. Uh, now I will uh, give you this warning if your if your files are to the resolution of a second then you do not want that bit on for more than a second if uh, if the resolutions to a minute then of course you want it off in less than a minute or hour or day whatever so just a little tip there uh, we've got our security shape and label tabs that are uh, same as everybody's used to with their other objects. Um, so that's a, that's a one way to back up the files or you can just let the uh, the times defined in your in your uh, project back them up. That's about it for collecting data samples and backing up data. Be sure to come back and watch the second part of this two-part video series.